This is the FlashForge Guider 3, one of the latest printers in the FlashForge lineup. This is the FlashForge Guider 2S version 2, the last version of this model before the FlashForge Guider 3 came out. The Guider 2S version 2 is a much loved model amongst educators, hobbyists and small manufacturers due to its capability, robustness and reliability. We have great expectations for the new Guider 3, building on the proven foundation of the Guider 2, and today we'll find out if it meets those expectations. To do this, we'll be putting these printers head to head and comparing the differences to see if it's worth upgrading to the Guider 3 or sticking with the much loved Guider 2S version 2. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and without further ado, let's get comparing. Alright guys, so there's quite a few differences between these two printers. So to make it easier for you guys, we've segmented it into four categories. We've got size, hardware, filament, and printer interface. The first thing you'll notice is that both boxes are fairly large in size. The Guider 2S version 2 box is also cube-like, whereas the Guider 3 box is taller and more rectangular. The Guider 2S version 2 box comes in at 670 by 615 by 695 millimeters. The Guider 3 box comes in at 585 by 530 by 760 millimeters. Now that the printers are out of the box, you get a better idea of the size difference. And as you can see here, the Guider 3 is indeed taller. The Guider 2S version 2 measures in at 550 by 490 by 570 millimeters. And the Guider 3 measures in at a slightly taller 496 by 436 by 696 millimeters. The general rule of thumb with 3D printers is a bigger printer means a bigger build size. And that hasn't changed here. The Guider 2S version 2 has a max build volume of 280 by 250 by 300 millimeters. And the Guider 3 has a slightly bigger max build volume of 300 by 250 by 340 millimeters. Despite the Guider 3 having a bigger build size, both machines have the same size build plate, which is very surprising. Speaking of build plates, the Guider 2S version 2 comes with one flexible build plate, which is standard on most newer FlashForge 3D printers. The Guider 3, on the other hand, has one up its predecessor, with not only one, but two build plates, the standard flexible build plate and a glass build plate, which is used for printing specialty filaments. FlashForge has also upgraded the design structure with the Guider 3, opting for a Core XY structure instead of the widely popular Cartesian design. Core XY structures use a belt system that moves in different planes from the moving print head, which reduces the moving mass when printing objects, resulting in a lightweight gantry system that can travel at faster speeds. According to FlashForge, this allows the Guider 3 to achieve high speed printing of 250 mils per second, saving you 30 to 50% off your printing time. Core XY structures also typically result in higher quality prints. The Guider 2S version 2 on the other hand uses a Cartesian structure which utilizes three axes, X, Y and Z, to move the print head as well as the bed in a linear motion. Cartesian 3D printers are generally easier to set up and use which is something to keep in mind when comparing these printers. Another upgrade FlashForge has made is the extruder. The Guider 2S version 2 uses a direct drive extruder design paired with brass nozzles that have a max temp of 300 degrees Celsius. Direct drive extruders are mounted on the print head and use a tooth gear and an unpowered idler wheel or roller to support and push the filament directly into the hot end. Since a direct drive extruder is mounted to the print head, the motor can easily push the filament through the nozzle, helping to reduce extrusion related issues. The FlashForge Guider 3 uses a new dual gear extruder design, paired with steel nozzles that have a max temp of 320 degrees Celsius. Dual drive extruders use two toothed gears that grip onto the filament and push it into the hot end. This design allows much more force to be applied to the filament through the nozzle, decreasing print times as well as reducing skip steps and filament grinding, which can sometimes be an issue with the direct drive extruders. A dual geared extruder is useful for printing all types of filaments, but it is a must have for printing flexible filaments. Another benefit of this dual drive extruder design is that it makes removing and replacing nozzles a lot easier. 
Another nice upgrade, in my opinion, is the filament spool holder. The Guider 2S version 2 uses a plastic external spool holder which sits on the back of the machine, whereas the Guider 3 has an internal metal spool holder to the side. This allows for easier access to the filament and eliminates the need to reach around the back of the printer. Out of the box, each printer comes with a 1kg spool of standard PLA, which will come in a random colour. This is great to see, as the Adventure 3 which was featured in our last comparison video only came with a 250g spool, despite its 500g capacity. The Guider 2S version 2, with its high temp extruder, can print using the following filaments. PLA, ABS, HIPS, PETG, PC and ASA. The Guider 3 can print with the same filaments that the Guider 2S version 2 can, plus some new ones. We believe it's due to the new dual gear feeding system and full metal hot end. However, it's not been confirmed by Flashforge. The additional filaments are PA, PACF, PLACF, PETGCF, and PETGGF. There have been quite a few moves and changes since the Guider 2S version 2 was released, and this is where we'll be going over them. Right away you can see the difference on the main screen. The Guider 2S version 2 has three buttons on the main screen. Build, Preheat, and Tools. The Guider 3, however, has been split into five tabs. Build, which is the default screen. Filament, Preheat, Tools, and Settings. The Build and Preheat tabs, for the most part, are the same, with just a different look. In the Build tab, the Guider 2S version 2 gives you options for local files, USB device, and Polar Cloud. On the Guider 3, you will see that they have added the Q function. You will then have local files and USB device. In the Preheat tab, both printers have separated options that control the individual temperatures of the extruder and the platform. The Guider 2S version 2 requires you to select which component you want to heat and then press start. The Guider 3 will allow you to individually heat the components without the need of toggling the component on or off. To get to the filament section on the Guider 2S version 2, you first need to select Tools and then Filament. The Guider 3, as mentioned before, has made this its own tab, making it quicker and easier to get to. Both have the Load and Unload function, however the Guider 3 has also added Clear, which is required before loading low temperature filaments after previously using high temperature filaments. Both printers have the Resume Printing function. On the Guider 2S version 2, this is off by default. This can be turned on by going to Tools, Settings, and then enabling it. The Guider 3 will have Resume Print on by default. It's labelled Recover Print, but this can be found on the second page of the Settings tab. To get to the Wi-Fi, on the Guider 2S version 2, you need to go to Tools, Settings, and then select Wi-Fi from the list. On the Guider 3, first you go to the Tools tab and then hit Network. Both printers have three parts to the levelling. On the Guider 2S version 2, you will find Extruder Calibration and Auto Level on the second page of the Settings menu. You will lastly find Level under Tools. The Guider 3 puts its three options together. This can be found by selecting the Tools tab and hitting Calibration. You will be met with the three options there, Z Axis Calibration, Sensor Calibration and Assist Calibration. With both printers being high temperature printers, they need to register when a high temperature extruder is installed. The Guider 2S version 2 has this option off by default, but it can be turned on by going to Tools, Settings, and then enabling it on the third page of Settings. The Guider 3 has this on by default, which you can check under the extruder type by selecting the About section on the second page of the Tools tab. One thing you should do on a regular basis is check for updates on your printer. On the Guider 2S version 2, you can check for updates by going to Tools, Settings, and then hitting Update on the fourth page of the Settings menu. On Guider 3, you can check for the updates by selecting Upgrade on the second page of the Tools tab. And lastly, both printers have inbuilt cameras that can be accessed through Flashforge Cloud or Polar Cloud. While the Guider 2S version 2 camera can only be accessed with the Flashforge Cloud or Polar Cloud, the Guider 3 also has a section on the second page of the Tools tab, allowing you to access any stored photos or time lapses from the camera which will reappear after a successful print. Please note that in order for the footage to be taken, you'll need to either have the photo or time-lapse options enabled.
After comparing the two machines, I can confidently say that the Flashforge Guider 3 lives up to all of our expectations. It looks great, it's easy to use, incorporates Flashforge's latest features, offers a large print volume with impressive speeds, and produces great quality prints. This still begs the question though, is it worth upgrading to the Flashforge Guider 3? If you're after a reliable printer at a low price point and speed isn't a big factor for you, then I recommend sticking with the Flashforge Guider 2S version 2. If you're after a reliable printer with some great quality of life upgrades that produces high quality prints in a short amount of time and you don't mind spending a little bit more, then I definitely recommend going with the Guider 3. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one.